of the public employees union still have more than a week left to decide how they're going to vote on that revised contract with the state. The state's second largest public employees union is pushing its members to support this deal. In fact, its leaders even bought a very large billboard near the Empire State Plaza. You've probably seen it. Many state workers pass that every day as they head in to their jobs. Joining me now is the president of PEF, Ken Brynan. He is here uh, about to embark on a very long journey. Glad to be back here. <laughs> I appreciate it. Seriously, you are hitting the road. You are personally going to ask members. You did it before, too. This isn't new. Yep. But this is part of your campaign, if you will, trying to get people to vote yes. So when you do that, what do you say to them? Well, my members, although they have various sources of information, their coworkers, other people that talk literature, they like to hear it directly from me. Sure. So sometimes I just put out pieces on our, our website or I, I'll call them on the phone. But going out and visiting and attending meetings is probably the best way. So I'll spend the bulk of this week just going to different places out in western New York. In what? Okay. So you, and you're driving yourself, yep. so it's like, you know, not a junket or anything. <laughs> you're going out there, it's getting actually quite cold. And when, are, generally speaking, are you met with, are people upset? Is it hostile? What's the tenor? I know you haven't started this one yet, but the last time around you were out there talking to people too. Right. The, the tenor actually has not been hostile. It's been more, so explain this to me. Right. Because there, there are details that may not be easy to understand at, at first glance. And so what does it mean for me? Right. What does it mean for the organization? So I take some time and, and explain what that is. Because some of it is more legalese than other pieces, and you have to talk people through that. Right. But once they understand it, most people say, oh, I get it now. That, that sounds okay. There are some people that you're never going to convince, clearly, right? right? I mean, there are some people who feel like this has been just the, the whole um, approach by the Cuomo administration was a, a slight, and they do not feel that layoffs was actually, they felt like it was engineered in some way because the millionaire's tax could have been extended, for example, that you didn't need to have this whole, that it was all because the governor came in knowing that he was going to do this. And, and actually prior, during the campaign, he did, sound a note of that made unions concerned. That's right, and I complained about it as well. I recall. I mean, we said there was plenty of ways to close the gap in funding, you know, eliminate high-priced consultants and duplicative efforts and waste in spending and all those kinds of things, you know, looking at the leases that you have and trying to find out where they are and go with less expensive facilities for office space, for example. Yep. And we did all that, and the legislature and the governor came to an agreement that said, We'll, we'll do whatever we can do, but there's still this $450 million gap that the unions collectively have to help fill. So the governor and legislature agreed on that already, and so now we're at the point where how do we deal with that? And so do you, is the argument that it doesn't matter if you think it's engineered or not? It is a reality. It has already passed. It is in the budget. It needs to be dealt with. It's just, it's just real. There's that, nothing. You, that, the way that, that it got there is not the point. That's correct. Right. And, but knowing what those arguments are, knowing that going forward we'll still support extending the millionaire's tax, we'll still support these other efforts that we've been doing, and we'll be doing that next year and the year after that. But that is the ongoing fight. What happens right now is we're faced with a particular economic situation, we're faced with a hole in the budget, and the governor has said we'll either get it from the unions through negotiations or we'll have to lay people off. So we negotiated the best deal we could get, and now it's time to bite the bullet and say, this is okay for now, we'll save our 3,496 members, right. and then we'll go back and we'll again deal with the legislature and the governor on the next budget. And you'll go back in four years, not five, unlike CSEA, for example. That's one of the changes, a, a fairly correct. significant change, actually. Yep, our people said that the economy should be getting better a little sooner than five years, so why do we need a five-year agreement, have a little short of agreement, hope that the times are better, and we'll go back and we'll be the first one to bat in negotiations and maybe we can lead the way and get something better. What, what do you say to folks who say our hand is actually strengthened as labor writ large and also as a powerhouse by just saying to the governor, you know, here's to you. In other words, we reject it again, we vote no, and then we demonstrate how powerful we are. Well, you can demonstrate your power in ways that doesn't put jobs at risk. I've seen many instances where unions steadfastly refused to go along with anything that, that they didn't like, and the companies went out of business. Mm -hmm. 
And so you proved your point, but now you're all unemployed. So it was proving that point worth it. So we're in a similar situation now where we've been fighting back. I mean, CSEA negotiated a settlement months ago. Yep. We're still out there. We made our case. We made the improvements that we could make that our members said we should make. But now is the time to say we, we've held out long enough before people are permanently harmed by the thousands. Let's make the deal, protect them, and then go forward. Is there some other way within the confines of this contract, assuming that it passed, that you could dig in against the administration? In other words, I mean, I'm not suggesting that you would advocate a slowdown in work or whatever that might be, but there are other, within the confines of this contract, are there ways to demonstrate your power to the governor? Well, there's always negotiations going forward. There are pieces in the contract that say the state and the union will will meet and agree on something or meet and confer on something. Mm. And in those meetings, we utilize whatever tools we have at our disposal to get our point across and get the best that we can for our members. But most of the fighting does occur away from negotiations. I mean, I'm presuming we'll still have fights over the millionaire's tax. There might be fights over uh, pension system changes. Well, Tier 6, for example. Right. Sure. And we're steadfastly opposed to that, and we'll fight as hard as we can to prevent that from happening. But there's always the state budget and funding for agencies and the work that we do. And so the challenges never stop. And so there are ways that we can demonstrate our voice, our power, without having to be directly contract related. So one way that you could do it potentially is to get on board with this Occupy Wall Street or Occupy Albany or Occupy whatever city happens, Buffalo, other places are doing it too. What is your plan for that? I know that there's going to be some solidarity marches in Albany uh, coming up on Thursday, I think, and it's, it's in conjunction with the millionaire's tax push. What the governor at this point is saying, at the federal level, great, at the state level, no, it doesn't make any sense to us. Right, and we, we completely disagree with that. So might you get on board then with this? We are advertising the event and any other events that are occurring around the state, and we are telling our people if you want to participate, you can. Mm. But at the moment, as an organization, we're not jumping in with both feet because we're still dealing with the contract stuff. Right. And we'd rather just settle that first and then move on to the next issue. Is it So it's just the contract and not, there's been some concern voiced, not by labor leaders so much, but some people in the Democratic Party who are a little bit keeping at arms, right, the governor himself, for example, he's not exactly out there rallying with anybody, because of the lack of message for, for this movement? Well, I haven't been made aware of leaders, per right. se. There are different organizations that are, are buying in and participating, but there, it's not a real movement where you have a leader and a structure. It's more um, a, just a group of like-minded people that seem to get together. Do you need a leader, though? I mean, that's, it is the traditional labor structure that, for example, you and your labor negotiation, contract negotiation team negotiate with the governor who puts up some other folks, and you sit at a table and make a decision. And then you, you get a result because there were people at the table. But do you have to? Maybe we're moving into some new era where you don't need a leader. To, ha to get more people involved and to have it, the group move in a certain direction, you do need some leadership. Mm. You can't just leave it up to whoever shows up at that particular time and place and whatever happens, happens. That's one of the problems that the Tea Party has had is that there wasn't really a full organization there. It was more groups of people. And so whether you agree with them or don't, they're sort of foundering a little bit in terms of where are we going. And this organization is sort of in the same place. So they need to co coalesce better.